Hello. This is for the first week of the course. So this is lesson one, information systems, security policy, and management. So the focus on key concepts for this week will be on information system security, or ISS, the information system security life cycle, audits, and their impact, information security governance, uh, framework considerations, importance of the policies, and also security concepts. So information systems security, or ISS for short. So what is it? It's the act protecting information and the systems that store, process, and transmit particularly information. So it's information systems, where information is stored, processed, and transmitted. So why is information system security needed? It provides a foundation for establishing protection of systems and data against risks, such as unauthorized access and use, disclosure, system disruption, modification or corruption, or destruction. So basically, not letting people who should not have access to information getting access to it, not allowing information that should not be disclosed outside the organization to be disclosed, not allowing systems to be disrupted or so that people cannot use the systems, modification or corruption of data or destruction of information. So the ISS management life cycle has different parts to it. There's the align, plan and organize, build, acquire and implement, deliver, service and support, and then monitor evaluate and assess. So the align, plan, and organize. That is what do you want to do? How do you want to get there? And what are the service level agreements? So example would be an IT contract. What are you getting? And what are the service level agreements in that contract? Next part is build, acquire, and implement. So those are the schedules, the deliverables, and the software builds. Example would be a system controls and configuration. Next, we have deliver, service, and support. The need to minimize the threats, analyze data, and also operational management and support. Example is how can data be protected? Have multi-factor um, to be able to have layers of protection or to protect information. And then monitor, evaluate, and assess. They need to test and monitor controls, analyze their effectiveness, and also audit the systems. Example will be the general controls review and also SOX compliance. So align, plan, and organize. The key concepts, and you have threats. So a human caused or natural event that could impact the system. It could be human caused, someone trying to hack into a system, or it could be a natural event like an earthquake or some type of storm. So vulnerability is a weakness in the system that can be exploited. Again, that could be a software um, hack avenue. People could come into a system, or it could be that you don't have a backup in case there's um, an earthquake or something. You can't get access to your information because you can't get into the building. And the risk is the likelihood or probability of an event and its impact. How likely is there to be 
a storm in your area? How likely is there to be an earthquake? Something like that, taking those risks and determining what are the most likely risks and what will their impact be. Let me talk about the audits. First, you have the self-assessment. This is typically a form of quality assurance and quality control. Then you have an internal audit, consists of reports to the board of directors and assesses the business. And then you have your external auditors. This is done by an outside firm hired by the company to validate the internal audit work and perform special assessments such as certifying annual financial statements. Then you have the regulatory audit. It's audited by government agencies that assess the company's compliance with laws and regulations. In particular, maybe something like the Federal Reserve Bank is what it does for its member banks. Then we have the five pillars of information assurance, IA. So there are confidentiality, integrity, availability, authentication, and non-repudiation. Confidentiality is making sure that only authorized people can access information or systems. Integrity is allowing so that information has not been changed to make sure no one's been able to get in there and make changes when they're not authorized to make those changes. Availability, information is available to authorized users when they need it. Authentication is the ability to verify the users, make sure they are who they are, say they are. And non-repudiation, that's the assurance that someone cannot deny that they are not party to a transaction. So make sure that you have authenticated them enough that they cannot say that they were, it was not them who made that transaction. So what is the difference between Information System Security, or ISS, and Information Assurance? They are similar, but Information System Security focuses on protecting information regardless of form or process. Whereas information assurance focuses on protecting information during process and its use. But they do share principles. Um, ISS um, shares the principle of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And the IA includes those three plus authentication and non-repudiation. Then we have the CIA triangle. So you have confidentiality, managing the highly sensitive data, meaning data should only be accessed by those who need it. And then integrity, information is changed only by those who have authority, a level of access and their understanding of the data. And then availability, enabling that information and systems are accessible and performing when needed. Then we have information security governance, and that includes uh, different aspects such as risk assessment, security policy framework, information assurance, and also compliance. So the security policy framework components, uh, we have a um, pyramid there at the top. We have the principle that the, establishes the tone at the top and authority by which policies are enforced. And then you have the policy defines how an organization performs and conducts business functions and transactions with a desired outcome. Then you have the standards and establish methods implemented within the organization. 
Then you have the procedures. Those are the steps required to implement a process. Then you have guidelines. Those are the parameters within which a policy standard or procedure is suggested. And then definitions. Statement that define terms used in policy documents and set context in which policy documents are interpreted. So the foundational reasons for using and enforcing security policies. So you want to make sure you protect systems from outside threats, such as hackers, protect the information at rest and also in transit. Controlling change to IT infrastructure and also making sure that you defend the business from those threats. So the roles of security policies in an organization as uh, the maintenance of secured work environment, make sure I have the change controls and also the physical security. Protection of information resources, including internal threats from employees or partners and also from storage and when information is in transit. So the importance of IS security policies. So with an ISS policies, uh, you can protect your data, make sure you control changes to a system or to information. You manage your risk. Uh, you can protect yourself from internal threats and also make sure that the systems and information have increased availability. But without ISS policies, you're going to end up having higher costs because you might be hacked and now you will get costs for that will come up. Um, you might be out of compliance, regulatory bodies. You'd be vulnerable to mishandling of the systems and to data and greater vulnerability to outside attacks. So to wrap this first um, lecture up, uh, key concepts, we looked at the key concepts within security operations. We looked at the ISS life cycle. We looked at information assurance, the importance of the policy, and also the governance model. Thank you.